Don. Where are we going? I don't know, but I don't like the looks of that tunnel up there. Hey, Wonk, I want off! Round the world and home again. That's the sailor's way. I don't mind the drive, Don. We're there. Where? Here. Welcome to the voiceover. Today we are doing one painting in four different styles and we'll be talking about some of the things that I did and learned and thought about throughout the process, starting with digital art and pop art. I did a little combination for you there. Before I began this, I created a black and white drawing of hoodie and then I used a cutout filter to bolden and smooth the lines out. Next, I used a red and white patterned page and I put it over the face so it lined up very well and then moved that behind my drawing layer so that I could create a mask on the drawing layer and remove the skin areas to reveal the red and white dots behind it. Well, red dots. This went really slowly because I am inexperienced and I had to figure out some stuff, but eventually I used the quick select tool and because I couldn't select the entire large white area of the face, I just did it in sections, but this made it go much, 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 much quicker. So little pro tip for you guys. Next, I created shines on my face, but everyone told me they looked dumb so i ended up getting rid of them in the end but you're gonna see them during this so figured i'd explain why they're there went ahead and cleaned up the edges using my paintbrush tool so that i could connect all of my shape and then fill in my painting with different colors i did a lot of experimenting i tried to keep my colors within the primary color range because this is inspired by roy lichtenstein's pop art paintings and generally they have that color scheme i tried a few different backgrounds before i decided on this one. It's a little bit busy, but kind of fun. I don't know. Did you guys like any of the other ones better? Let me know if you guys want a more thorough Photoshop tutorial ever. Uh, if not, I'll just leave it to the actual pros who know what they're doing. Next, we moved on to an experimental portrait. It's, um, it's pretty weird, but I kind of like it too. So, hey, I decided to do some really, uh, maroon and red colors, just really hyper pigment things. And, um, it, it made it pr pretty, pretty scary. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> On top of that, I used some weird green coloration in the skin as well, which, you know, that didn't help the fact that it looks like a monster. There's a lot of trial and error when you're trying out different styles that you're not used to. It definitely takes you out of your skill zone and comfort zone to try new things, but hey, it is really fun. And every once in a while, it's good to challenge yourself and see if there's things you find that you love and learn from it, which I totally did. And you're going to see different portions of this video where there's cut and changes and that's because I didn't have a plan ahead of time and I took this in some pretty weird directions that I ended up cutting out. I decided on this yellow background and didn't really know what I was doing with it. Don't know why I washed out the face a little bit, but I had to fix that later. Then I used the end of my paintbrush to carve out some designs, add some texture, and quickly decided it looked like I had a floating face, so I needed to add back in that characteristic hoodie definition with some browns. Finishing up the skin, fixing it, adding little bits of white here and there, and voila, we have our very very experimental hoodie. You never know how these things are gonna enter your art in the future. More up my alley, we're doing some realism. If you guys saw my Mona Lisa hoodie painting, I have to say, I think this hoodie painting came out a little better. I am creating an underpainting with acrylic. The reason I do these underpaintings is because it makes it easier for me to build up my paint layers quickly. A lot of times when you have oil paints, painting wet into wet, you can kind of drag up the paint that's underneath it, or your paint will be a little bit more translucent because of the medium or the oils that are mixed into it. This allows me to have a dry base underneath right away so that I can and start to develop those colors, build up the layers, build up the shading. I did end up doing this painting over a period of like three days in different sittings so that I could allow it to dry or get a fresh perspective on it, but altogether it took about four hours and this is like four by six inches big. If you guys are interested in seeing a more in-depth tutorial on how I do the specific proponents, ponent, proponents, pon how do you say that? Of the face? Then you guys can check out my do's and don'ts series. I have a realistic skin tutorial for different skin tones as well. Realistic hair tutorial, eyes, nose. Check out that playlist. I will leave links in my description and some links in my end screen as well for you guys to check 
out. The very final stage of this painting, I fixed up some details and after everything was dry, I created a little bit of a glaze to add in some minor tweaks to the tones of the skin, add some peachiness. I created my glaze using my liquid medium and a little bit of oil paint to create a really translucent color on top of my existing skin color. And that gives us our hoodie portrait. Next we're moving on to another stylized painting. This one was influenced by Sofia Bonatti. I found her on Pinterest and I really liked the style of her portraits and wanted to try it out. I did an exaggerated eye on this so I kind of went outside the lines but if you guys are curious how I got those lines you can check out my video secret artist hack. It is about a charcoal drawing transfer technique. It's a way that you guys can trace a photograph onto a surface and then you can fill in in those lines like a coloring book either do a drawing with it or a painting over it I really like doing this because portraits are super hard if you don't get the drawing accurate that's just gonna make things extra hard for you because the painting part alone is super hard if you change that shading that highlight you change the bone structure for my skin I created a kind of ghostly white and weirdly pinkish tone that was done with oil and then on the outside I created a black hoodie using acrylic paint. I did this so that things would dry really quickly and so I could add white details over the top of my black paint without having to worry about them blending together when painting wet into wet. There's me fixing the eye shape and then if you guys are worried about this my my black acrylic paint went on super matte and if you don't want that if you want a more glassy texture like you get with oils amazing product that I use not sponsored just love it. It's an acrylic sealer gloss finish spray. It made everything just look glassy and beautiful. This white portion of acrylic was my favorite part of the painting. It's very reminiscent of the religious iconography found in art history. It creates a halo effect and I use it also to define some folds in the fabric. Whew, so much talking. All right, here are our four styles side by side by side by side. And in order of appearance, we have our pop art, digital art, our experimental piece, our more realistic hoodie, and lastly, a very stylized hoodie. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for new videos every Friday. And as always, if you guys have anything you would like to learn on this channel, let me know in the comments below. I've been looking at your suggestions and I will definitely be taking you up on them. So thank you, thank you. I will see you guys next Friday, goodbye.